Welcome to Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes with your hosts Bert Lafour, Damian Monte Carlo, and Angry Mike D. Well, Alright, sit back and enjoy the ride as they talk about all things that rock and other useless knowledge you don't care about. And remember, every asshole has an opinion. This is theirs. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. All right, we're back with another episode of Mixtapes and Tasty Cakes. Uh, this one, we, we are going to review um, the Ozzy Osbourne record, Diary of a Madman, because uh, Ozzy was just inducted into the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, it's... Uh, you know, Halloween season still, and uh, you know Ozzy is, you know, definitely Halloween. Season, Halloween, think, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but um, I, I mentioned it before, uh, on other episodes that I, I'm pretty traumatized by Ozzy. Like I have a hard time listening to him because uh, when I was like 18, I played in a band with this guy. He was a big Ozzy freak, <laughs> and it's like the only. It, it was like the only band that he liked was like Black Sabbath and Ozzy and nothing else. So everything was, you know, it was just like fucking <laughs> overload. So I, I can't really listen to Ozzy that much because of him. Um, but uh, so when I listen to this album, it's, it actually is like really refreshing because barely listen to, uh, to Ozzy like album, you know, That's all the way back. through. And I was really shocked uh, at how great this this one was, um, front to back. Probably, man, it's got to be one of his it's best up, ones. Yeah. It's one or two. Yeah, it's got to be one or two. Yeah. But uh, so before we even break the album, let's talk a little bit about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So the speech was kind of short, short and sweet. The speech was. What do you think of the performances? Let's talk about the first performance. It was a uh, Crazy Train, Maynard James Keenan. Uh, and uh, Wolfgang Van Halen, Chad Smith, Andy Watt, and I forget the other guy. Who was the other guy who was playing uh, bass? Robert Trujillo was on bass. Robert Trujillo, and uh, there was another guy playing guitar too. I forget. Was Zach on guitar? No, after that was the second song. Okay, I forgot the other dude's name, but uh, yeah, but uh, so that first performance, uh, I'm gonna go first. Uh, it was interesting seeing Maynard sing that, but it's not really his style. But mm -hmm. I thought he did okay. Um. I thought Wolfgang was great. The back and vocal sound, the great. I thought Wolfgang was really, he was doing some cool stuff with the guitar. I yeah. thought the band was really good. I thought Wolfgang was definitely a standout. What did you think of that song, Dave? They should have just had Wolfgang sing and play guitar. That'd be uh, cool. But, um, cause it, I, he, he does have that kind of voice. He could hit for that. that. Uh, the singer, Maynard, uh, it, it was just, a weird pick. Maybe on paper, yeah, he's from Tool and and they're cool and everything and 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 whatever. But uh, and yeah, it was a little out of the, a little bit out of the box uh, vocally, which could have been cool too. But um, yeah, it wasn't uh, definitely wasn't his thing, uh, really. I mean, but musically, I thought it it sounded good. good yeah. You know? Yeah. How about you, Mike? Yeah, musically it sounded good. Uh, sound wise. The sound guy should have been fired. That's, it, what, that's what a lot of people were saying. The sound was it like. was. Uh, it, it sounded like an amateur show. Like it sounded like. It sounded like no offense, Bert. Like one of your Steel Justice shows. <laughs> <laughs> you had good music going on, but some of those sound that's guys a are just a little fucked up. You know. <laughs> yeah, it, actually, your Steel Justice show might have had better sound than that. I'm sorry. Jeez. I really yeah. am. I'm sorry, Bert. They, they should have paid but, the sound guy twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 these sound guys are just horrible, man. And this is supposed to be like on a big scale. This is Ozzy Osbourne we're talking about. You're inducting this guy into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and you guys make it sound like shit. Yeah, I mean they're probably going to sweeten it before they release it. Uh, yeah, but we, we know, are, yeah. we know, yeah. we know, and, and you, we can't, know, right? you can't unsweeten. It. Yeah, because no. this was it was the unedited live thing, and then yeah. you know I think what's it going to be on HBO like next month or something? Probably, yeah. Something they, like they, that, they're yeah. going to. Edit everything, and then you know they're going to fix all that shit up. Absolutely, you know. But I mean, I don't know. I I felt like Maynard was flat on it. I mean, it just felt like he he was doing something that shouldn't have been done by him. Yeah, like it's not. He doesn't really have that upbeat sound. Hit crazy train. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I, I just wasn't feeling. 
I think Wolfgang's really good. But I look at him, and I'm like, man, like you just seem like you have no emotion going on. You're just like in your own little world, like not even, I don't know, like no, mm-hmm. no presence. I'll put it that way. Gotcha. Okay, so the second song um, we had was uh, "Mom, I'm Coming Home," which I believe it was Zach. Um, most of the same guys, I think, playing, and uh, you had Jelly Roll singing, which was an interesting pick. I thought the verses sounded real good. The choruses were a little rough. Uh, when I, I heard it more than once, so the first time I heard it, I was like, "Oh, it's pretty good." Second time I heard it, I heard the difference. Um, and you know, a little weird near the ending, but the guy's got that de- guy's definitely got a good voice. I just don't know if that was perfect for him or someone else just maybe sang the chorus with him or something like that. How about you, Dama? Yeah, you know, it's another another choice where you know it's like they had to go, you know. They're not going to ask, um, I don't know, uh, James Hetfield to sing it or or whoever. They're they trying to go, go it's cool right to say. They I think it would have been better if James Hetfield yeah, sung and tell you the it, truth. It would have been. It would have made sense. And <laughs> it would have you know, been pretty cool actually. But uh, yeah, they wanted to go out, you know, out of the box and go for the hot, the hot thing right now, and uh, kind of made sense because it is like a bluesier tune. But yeah, dude, he was. Come on, man. You got to fucking nail that, all that shit. I mean, it was way off at the end. There's no yeah, fucking excuse. It's not like it's not like karaoke where they're just jumping up here for the first time. There's it was probably like week long rehearsals right. for for everybody, or at the very fucking least, a day or two, like really really long, like maybe six hour like rehearsals of that song. There's no fucking way there wasn't. Yeah. Dude, come prepared, man. Know your shit. You should not be singing out of key at the end of that. That yeah. whole home thing. If you can't fucking do it, then get somebody else. Yeah, because you don't else. have to sing it like Ozzy. I mean, it's almost impossible to sound like I, it's just that's a totally distinctive voice. It, it, it's all he was it was in the key of X. I mean, it was <laughs> it was like dude, what are you doing, man? The ending was weird. The ending was you know, weird. and there's some people making excuses. You know, I was talking to guys at work and you know. It's like, come on, guys, man. These these dudes are fucking professionals. Like they do this for a fucking living. They're signed. They're 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 the fucking at the top of the mountain, right? Mm. Well, I they're mean, setting the, these guys are setting the bar. Okay, they're not they're not playing fucking um, uh, fucking Joe's bar on a fucking Thursday night uh, open mic night. Give those guys a pass. Not these guys who are fucking winning the Grammys on the fucking radio. But you know, it's just how it's just how music is now. They, I don't know, I'm going to sound like an old guy, but it's just <laughs> back in the day, fucking singers could sing, and yeah, people have a bad note every once in a while. But you know, when you're hitting a bad note, this guy, I, I felt like if you can't, if you can't hit the note, go for it, find another note. Yeah, that's in key, right? Sure. Yep. That, like it things. was yeah, it was pretty bad, dude. I mean. And I'm going to say, the second time I listened to it, I was like, okay, this isn't that bad. But like, wait, let me listen to it again, because I really wasn't paying attention to it the first time I listened to it halfway through. And then it seemed like halfway through, it just really got me. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, I can't say no more. Damien pretty much said it all. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Here here goes one that looked great on paper. But it was, I, I, I wish it was better than what it was. Was Billy Idol singing "No More Tears"? It was interesting, but yeah, it looked good on paper. On paper, something looked cool. it looked pretty good, but yeah, it, that didn't really work for me. Demo, uh, I, I thought it was better than Jelly Roll. Uh, I, 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 it, it was out of his range, but he still sang it in key. Yeah, see, like th- that's an example. Like it's that's not something Billy Idol would would sing. He doesn't right. sing high like that. No. You know, and he kind of sang it like Billy Idol. Yeah, yeah, I I I thought it wasn't. I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was it was interesting. You know, I, I never saw somebody go higher later in their career. It's, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, like, it's usually the opposite. Right. You know? He he's he was all, like always very kind of low key, but he sounded like he was really. When does Billy Idol go there? He he gets he definitely gets a name for effort for sure. He 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 definitely tried and. Uh, I thought it was yeah. De- I mean, definitely looked good on paper. I I I didn't hate it. You know. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it, 
at, at first I'm like, what the hell? What the fuck? I'm like, this is kind of weird, but it was like, Hey, you look at the two before him and it's like, he was definitely, <laughs> definitely the professional out of put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I love tool, so I can't really wreck them too much. I mean, I know they're not that he, he's usually better than that, but well, not, just listen, not tonight. <laughs> you can have the greatest thing in the world. If it don't fit what you're doing, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's right. It's the yeah. style thing. But Billy Idol was kind of out of nowhere. Like, I thought there would have been, like, another big rocker or something like that. Like, maybe Rob Halford or something. That's something. who should have like, did that but, song. Rob Halford should have yeah, no more to you. Yeah. Maybe James Hetfield for Crazy Train. Right, yeah. I, yeah. Right. Actually, Halford, I, I'm surprised, wasn't a part of that because he's in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that would have made sense. But Yeah, or I'm surprised they didn't get, like, some big top female to sing Mom, I'm Coming Home. I was surprised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really know that's what that's Billy Eilish doing. Mama, I'm coming mm, Billy, Eilish. Yeah. <laughs> mm, Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish. Billy right. Eilish and Billy Idol should have sang. Uh, yeah, Billy and Billy. Uh, one more thing before we go. Like, I, I was just so wait. Like, I'm like, what the hell happened to Jack Black? He he, he looks like the Lorax. Huh. <laughs> yeah, he looks like and, and it was actually like I'm, I was annoyed when he went over to Ozzy and he's like, You're the legend. Yes, you are. You <laughs> so are. And I'm like, weird. That's just weird. And I'm like, and Ozzy kind of almost gave him this look like, you fucking varmint. I'm going to bite your head off. <laughs> the last person to stick a bat in my face, that bat didn't stand the chance. I was so waiting. Like, I was like, oh, I, I, I think Ozzy don't give a fuck at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you I was so waiting for, for it. just to bite Jack Black's head. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. So we're going to do Diary of a Mad Man. Eight songs. We're going to count down from our least favorite to our favorite as the panel numbers, we take them all, we average them out, and uh, we talk a little bit about the song. So, I have the regular album behind me, and I do have the picture disc here. Mm. Pretty cool back, back, back of the record. Yeah, pr- pretty, pretty good. Um, interesting fact, I guess we could say, um, on the album itself, you had Ozzy on vocals, Randy Rhodes on guitar, Bob Daisley. On bass, Lee Kerslake on drums. But if you look at the album cover, because I always thought till years after when I was younger, I always thought it was Tommy Aldridge and uh, everybody did, and Rudy. Yeah, I thought they played on the record and they did not. Nope. They're even like credited as being the band. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, when I was a touring man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you know, this was the last really record that he did with Randy studio wise. Yeah. I mean, after this, what was tribute after this? And that was just alive, right? Mm-hmm. So Randy only did two with them. But um, yeah, so uh, Rudy Sarzer got credit. Tommy Aldridge got credit. And um, yeah, the album cover. If you look at the album cover, the little kid in the background is Ozzy's oldest son, Lewis. Hmm. I didn't know we had another son. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got, a, he's got a whole other family, man. Like yep. uh, his wife in the 70s. I think he's got a girl, too. I'm not sure if he's got a girl, too. I know he's definitely got Lewis. Is definitely. Oh, he's got three. He's got three kids with Sharon. I think he's got a couple, maybe two or three with his. With Thelma. Wife. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, and like one of the reasons why I wanted to do this record is the album cover. Let's look, let's go back here again one more time. Yeah. Let's Love look at that again. Cover. Love that album cover. Like, it's yeah. just. How scary is that, dude? Like when you're young, yeah. how fucking scary is that? If I was a kid, man, I'd be scared. I was scared shitless. What, what year was this? 80, 83? 81, I believe. Recorded in 81. 80. Did it come out in 81? 81. Came out in 81. Okay. So yeah, man, I'm like seven years old. That would have that would have scared the balls off me. Yeah, October 1981. And then I don't know if it was 90 something where they uh, actually re recorded the Ugh. bass and drums. Exactly Just so I guess because there was a falling out with Bob Daisy and Lee Kersley. So yeah, man, they got those guys got fucking shit end. Like especially Bob Daisley, man. That, Bob Daisley wrote a lot of this. He he wrote a lot of like those all all those classic albums up to No More Tears. Uh, mm-hmm. Bob Daisley uh, yep. co wrote. You know, it's just uh, it's yeah, a weird situation, know. I guess. You know, yeah. Whatever the business the business deal is, dude wasn't even mentioned. Uh, you know, in the speech, you know, but at this point, you know, if Ozzy even putting a sentence together is. Yeah, you know, it, it, pretty exactly. Bad shape, so. And he always says that he had no, uh, you know, I guess Sharon said it was her and Ozzy or it was just Sharon's decision. I think I think Ozzy. Just didn't care, you know? yeah, right. <laughs> but um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, go from eight to one and we're going to kick it off the first one. 
Coming in our lowest score at number eight tonight. What do you got, Demo? Man, I forgot how great this song was. This is, uh, man, this is a really good song. And you don't hear even really hear too much about it. Uh, it's just kind of like, um, it's like a hidden gem, really. I mean, it's a really, really well-written song. Um, I gave it a 7.5. Mike D. Uh, not really my cup of tea. A little slow for me on this. Uh, I gave it a six. Like, and not that I hate slow songs, but sometimes when the album rocks so much, to me, it just kind of slows it down. Kind of like, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear more rock. And so I wasn't feeling this one. Didn't hate it, but what did you give definitely it? Did, gave it a six. Okay. Tonight, I gave a 7.75. I like the song. It's not as good as Goodbye to Romance, but I think it's a solid song. I like the keyboards. The vocal melody is really good. It's a good song. Coming at number seven. You can't kill rock and roll, Demo. What you got? Yeah, this is a great one, man. I love this song. Uh, I love the whole theme, the lyrics. Um, but it's it, it's like a real it's like a real pretty song too, you know, like musically. Um, and it's got a great chorus. Uh, I gave it an eight, eight out of ten. It's one of my favorite ones on the album. Mike D. I, I like this, other than the whole you know rock and roll motif that I'm just <laughs> sick of hearing in songs. Really, I mean, it's a really good song. I mean, the lyrics are so good, uh, though. I, I probably would have gave it maybe a seven point five or an eight otherwise, but I mean, it had a lot of cool things going on in it. But I gave it a six point five. Okay, for me, you can't kill rock and roll. It's got a nice, pretty opening. It's another solid song. Good melody, good pre-chorus. The chorus itself's okay. The rock and roll part part is a bit corny, but it was the eighties, and it was all that in the eighties. You know, I love rock and roll, rock, rock till you drop, you know, mm-hmm. rock you like a hurricane. We have to do an episode on all the things that rock. <laughs> that might be an episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I think the lyrics were so good, though. It just really made you feel like, you know, yeah, you can't can't kill, kill rock, rock and roll. And roll. No. Yeah. No, it's it's still a great song. Coming in number six, Sato. Sato. Is, yeah. How do you, well, I never even know what the pronunciation is. It S A T O. Is it Sato or I don't know. I always call it Sato. Sato. Yeah. Sato. Sato. S A T O. I don't know. Uh, there's a great fucking song. This is another one, man. It's just uh, one I don't listen to enough. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I, uh, Heard it again because I forgot how, how much I liked it, and I gave it an eight point two five. Very cool, Mike D. I probably should have gave it higher. I mean, there was something about it that I didn't like, but the, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, the bass is just out of control in this this song. He, he's just just killing everything in this, and that's for me. That's the whole reason to listen to this song is the bass is just he's going, he's out of control. Yep. Um. I gave Sato, Sato. Uh, it's a cool, eerie opening to the song. Then it goes yeah. straight to like this rock riff, just a rocker riff. Uh, the verse kind of just chugs along. The bass is, like Mike said, the bass is absolutely cool in this one. Uh, overall, it's not bad, just not as strong as some of the other songs, but the middle part is really cool. Uh, I gave it a 7.25. And also, I looked up to see what the song was about. I know I heard rumors about some of it. The thing they said, the song was about a voyage and about a book he read back in the day or something like that. And then the other rumor was that it's about, you know, this letter stand for Sharon and Thelma Osborne, which I don't know how true that is, but mm. <laughs> that's interesting. I don't okay. know if it's in with the lyrics, but yeah, so I, that might just be a rumor. Coming at number five, Little Dolls. What do you got, Damo? Uh, this is my least favorite. Uh, Still got a, a good score, but uh, it reminds me of like a late era Ozzy Sabbath song, like something that he would do on like Never Stay Die or something. But uh, yeah, I gave it a uh, what was I give it a seven, I think seven out of ten. And that's my lowest one. On that's still album. good. Still good. Yeah. Yeah. Mike D. Yeah. I mean, to me, this one sounded like a classic Ozzy kind of, you know, like Damien said, I love the drum intro on that. So it was just crazy. Yeah. I would gave you- this one an eight. Okay, Little Dolls, I gave it an 8.5. Cool drum intro. I do dig this one. I like the melody. It's a cool melody. Uh, lyrically, I'm not sure if it's about Jack the Ripper, but it's something about that type. It's I was pretty, I was getting like, pretty interesting. I mean, I, re- I didn't read all the lyrics. I was kind of getting like it was about like a voodoo, maybe. I don't know. Okay. 
I I think it I think there's like this mystery kind of killer guy, and I guess the chick might be like the doll, the doll. You know okay, I mean? something like that. But um, yeah, I mean it, it's a good tune. It, it's got an eerie feel to it. Uh, really, really good breakdown part too. Yeah, I think that's a pretty solid song. Coming at number four, Believer demo. Yeah, I like the uh, the simple bass intro. Um, you know, it's eerie. I like the the guitar riff it's pretty evil sounding uh uh great song man uh, just uh really like wicked sounding um i gave it a 7.95 okay much day this one's a nine for me just that I, I know it's simple like damien said but that drum and bass in the beginning and then just when that that, that haunting sound of that guitar just kicks in oh, it's like you really don't even need ozzy in this one it's just just <laughs> music is great yeah it, but uh, this one, then when Ozzy kicks in, it just gets even better. It's yeah. I, I gave this one a nine. Yep, believer, this is up there. believer. I gave it a nine point two five. Uh, I really like this one. I like the lyrics. It's got a scary, it's, yeah, it's got a scary feel to the song uh, with mm-hmm. cool background effects going on. Great guitar riff. Uh, the song's perfect, I think, for Ozzy's vocals. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the song. Another solid solo from Randy Rhodes. Uh, yeah, this song's. Great, and that bass intro, boom, boom. boom. It's just fucking. Boom. It's fucking boom. great. Yeah. So good. Coming at number three. Oh yeah, flying high again there, demo. Yeah, I always, for some reason, I always think that this song is from the first album because it sounds like, like it will be on those batch, of, uh, that batch of song. And but then on the other hand, it, it always sounds like, like, like pretty like, like recent too. Like it doesn't have like a dated sound, but it's a. It's a classic Ozzy song, and uh, I gave it an 8.5. Okay, Mike D? Yeah, another one. I gave it 8.5 in this one, too. I mean, what else is there to say about this song? You know, this is just classic Ozzy all around. Yep, Flying High Again, I gave it a 9.3. The most commercial song of the record. It's classic Ozzy song. Uh, A lot of good stuff going on musically. It's just a fun song. It's a fun song. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I could put it. Coming in number two. Over the mountain. What do you got, Damo? Uh, one of the best drum drum intros ever, you know. And you know, all those years, uh, everyone thought it was Tommy Aldridge, and uh, here yes. it's uh, Lee Lee Curse, like that poor guy. Yeah, I really thought it was Tommy uh, too. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's a fucking great song. The guitar riff, everything about it. Uh, it's it's perfect. It's, I gave it a ten. Mike D gave us one of nine. Yeah, this is about as perfect a vibe you song can get too. I, I think I like a lot of older Oz, like Breathe, yeah. um, No Rest for the Wicked kind of stuff. Maybe with the uh, Ultimate Sin sounds a little dated, don't it? But I don't know. His, his first two albums are just so damn good. They're great, yeah. Um, Over the Mountain. Perfect. 10. I gave it a 10. Uh, as soon as it starts with the drums, I'm hooked. I'm hooked right off the bat. Uh, Curse Link's drums intro is one of my favorites of all time. It's a great way to start off the record. I mean, you put the record on. It's this fucking. I'm sold as soon as it starts, you know, and it's probably it's in probably my top two, three favorite Ozzy songs of all time. It's definitely up there. Coming in at number one title track, Diary of a Man Man. What do you got, Demo? Uh, it's a song is a masterpiece. It's uh, musically, it's just like so well put together, the odd time and everything on the accents and everything the uh the choral like choir type vocals it's really yeah. eerie man it's, it reminds me of something that would be on like a soundtrack of like the omen or the exorcist or something it's man, it's such a great fucking song it, it's another one it's perfect uh i mean i gave over a mountain 10 this one is should be a 10.5 or something <laughs> right. but uh it's obviously a 10 perfect i thought mike d Davis won a 9.5, man. This song is awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just the guitars, the chants. It's 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 froggy, which I love that stuff. It's, mm-hmm. it's the timing on it's all over the place. It's it's great. And I'll tell you what I heard of this one, Bird. You'll you might even know too. From later on, I hear Queen's like Sweet Sister Mary in that acoustic guitar part. Of it. I can hear it's like, yeah. Uh, they definitely stole parts they of this song. Get a little lift Absolutely. Up. <laughs> Well, everybody's influenced it. by Randy Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Diary of a Madman. Perfect. It's a 10 for me also. Uh, I mean, imagine the lights out, lighting a candle, putting this record on, you know, scary shit. If you're a kid, it's it's scary yeah. shit, man. Uh, it's got haunting lyrics and the vocal melodies are haunting. Incredible guitar parts with metal and classic music intertwining with each other. Uh, Ozzy sings high as shit on some of this. And uh, the eerie guitar part in, in into an awesome solo. Uh, it's the goods. It's just a great, great song. His opening track and ending track are fucking perfect for this record. Perfect. For yeah, I, I was just, I was going to add it. This is yeah the, the the opening and the ending. It's like the perfect bookend. Perfect. You know, I mean, it, you can't pick, you can't find two better songs to open and close an album. Mm-hmm. It's 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 like fucking perfect. You know. Totally agree. What's your final thoughts, Damo? Uh, again, like I said, you know, when we started, uh, I haven't listened to this all the way through in a long time. And when I, when I listened to it today, it felt like it, it was like really fresh. It was like, like I heard it for the first time and, uh, I really, really forgot how great it was. Probably it's gotta be probably his best one. I think in, in my opinion, if we were, if we were going to rank all his albums today, I would definitely put this at number one. It's so it's. It's perfect. I mean, even even the, the the one I rated seven, you know, tonight. I thought that was a great song. Right, it's a great song. Uh, deserves more attention, I think. You know, even though it is slow, it's but um, <laughs> I thought it was very well written the whole, the whole entire record. Mike D. Yeah, I mean, this might be my favorite Ozzy album. I don't know. I have to go back and listen to the first one again now. It's but close, yeah. This is this is really good. I, I gave this total. I think I gave it a seven point nine four. Probably. I mean, if I'm rating as a whole, it'd probably be a nine. But the way we do it, seven point nine four. Gotcha. Uh, my final thought is, it's either my favorite Ozzy album or my second favorite Ozzy album. It's a toss up depending on the day between. What's the other? You know, one? Blizzard of Oz would have to be the other one, uh, and probably No Rest for the Wicked, No More Tears is close by. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is either my favorite or my second favorite. Uh, the album is really cohesive. It's it's just cohesive. It just Front put to together back. well. Yeah, Even going into you know the old style, the way you would put songs together, you have the big opening, and then it goes right into Flying High again, which is you know your commercial song. It's just perfect. The flow of the album is perfect, and the amount um, of songs I th- I thought were great. Perfect. Too. Eight songs, forty three yeah. minutes, something like that. Perfect. Mm-hmm. You don't need more. It's per- that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, the combination of Ozzy, Bob Daisley, Lee Kerslake, and Randy Rhodes is a perfect mix. Uh, this album's absolutely, I think, a must-have in anybody's collection. I think it's top Ozzy, top Ozzy. So that being said, Damien gave this an 8.4. Mike D gave it a 7.937. I gave it an 8.726 as a total. Altogether, 8.35, which is a really high rating for us. Yeah. So, yeah, Diary of a Man, man. Ozzy, pick it up, listen to it, grab it. See you next week. Mixtape Stays Kicks. I'll be your savior, I'll be your traitor, I'll be the one who will decide.